Hi, this is Dennis Spaeth, publisher, Cutting Tool Engineering. We're here in Troy, Michigan at Seco Tools North American Headquarters, and I'm with uh, Jay Ball, Product Manager for Solid Milling, and uh, I want to get a little bit deeper into the optimized roughing uh, subject that we've been discussing the last couple of videos. Jay, how do the machine capabilities factor into optimized roughing? They have to make sure that their machine has the proper RPM capabilities, the proper look at capabilities with the right controller to get to some of these higher speeds and feeds. Like I mentioned earlier, the lighter the arc of contact, the higher the spindle speeds, the higher the feed rates. So if your machine, say, is in that lower RPM range, that maybe eight to 5,000 RPM range, it's got a lot of high torque, a lot of high horsepower, gear-driven spindles, it's probably not best to use that tool for what we call traditional optimized roughing. Maybe high performance optimized roughing where you're taking heavier step overs, but you know that's a different topic. So if your machine has 10 to say 20,000 RPM, has a really good CNC controller with really good look ahead, that can get to some of those you know, two, three, 400 inches a minute feed rate capabilities, those are the types of machines that I think are best suited for optimized roughing. What happens if your machine can't keep up? Well, that actually is a topic that um, I've talked about quite a bit. I'm very passionate about it, and it's this topic called maintaining constant chip load. And what it happens when you're optimized roughing or high feed machining or any of these new advanced strategies is when you program to a specific RPM and feed rate, but the machine can't maintain your program feed rate, as that feed rate changes and your RPM doesn't change with the feed rate, your tool actually rubs because your chip load is constantly in flux. What that does is that actually affects your tool life, affects your surface finish, and it has a huge impact on your overall part quality. So maintaining constant chip load is probably one of the most important things to remember when you're looking at optimized roughing. So the tool holder is an important factor as well in all of this. That is very correct. It's often overlooked in a lot of applications or a lot of situations. Um, the name of the game with optimized roughing is clamping pressure. Because of the lighter radial step overs but the large depth of cuts, you can a lot of times have some increased cutting pressure. So making sure that you have a good holder that is going to offer a lot of transmittable torque but also give you minimum run out. I've always been a big fan of uh, this saying, if you have less than four tenths run out, you should get optimal tool life. Anything more than four tenths is going to actually cut your tool life in half, especially when you're machining these harder machine materials, the titanium, zinc canals, the wasp alloys, the hast alloys. So what I look for in a holder is reduced runout, clamping force, um, anti-pull-out holders as well. So for me, uh, milling chucks, power milling chucks are probably my first choice for optimized roughing applications. Shrink fit, uh, heavy duty reinforced shrink fit with some sort of anti-pull-out as well. Um, hydraulic holders, as long as they're heavy duty reinforced, again with anti-pull-out is going to be beneficial. And then also too, um, manufacturers that make side lock holders, the old traditional welding style holders that a lot of us used to using in the machining world, those now are being uh, machined more accurately. So they give you 100% pull-out reduction, but they also give you the ability to have good run-out. Again, less than four tenths, you're going to have optimal tool life when you're looking at uh, optimized roughing.